Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of, of 2 Kings, chapter 19. This is one of the high points of the history of Israel. The king is Hezekiah. The nation that is in power is the nation of Assyria. And they have, under the leadership of their king and commander, Sennacherib, they have come down and they have already destroyed and carried off into captivity the northern kingdom of Israel. Now, of course, we recognize that God allowed that because of Israel's apostasy, and he preserved Judah for a a uh, few years after that, probably another hundred years or so after that. And he preserved them uh, because at least at that point, they were more faithful than Israel was in the north. So Sennacherib, though, he doesn't know what all is going on there. He comes down and he destroys the nation of Israel. He takes Samaria and carries off the kings and he replaces the people with other conquered peoples and carries the Jews, uh, excuse me, the Israelites off to other places. And so he, he's bent on conquest. He's going to be the, uh, the, the greatest commander ever in his mind. And so he comes down against the, the nation of Judah and many of the smaller cities succumb to uh, his advance. And then he comes to Jerusalem and he says, I'm going to take Jerusalem. And so he, he sends his emissary and the man uh, shouts up to the, the people on the walls, don't, uh, uh, don't trust in your gods because we've defeated all of them and we're going to defeat your God too. And this challenge to the authority of the God of Israel was the mistake that Sennacherib and his people made. He challenged the one who was living and true. All the other gods of the nations, as Hezekiah says, were just idols. They were not gods at all. But the God of Israel is the true and living God. And, and this is what Sennacherib uh, challenged at this particular point. Now, one of the reasons I consider this a high point is there's actually two reasons. First of all, there are three different passages of Scripture where this story is, re is referenced. And there are nuances in each of those particular story. One, one in 2 Chronicles 32 and one in uh, Isaiah starting in chapter 30, uh, 36 or 37. And, and these stories... Uh, tell exactly the same thing that we see here in 2 Kings chapter 19. And one of, the, one of the, the other reason why I believe this is such a high point is that in the midst of all of that, God sets up the circumstances and he sets up the, the board, so to speak, so that he could prove to the world who he is. We find that in verse 19 where it says, so that all the nations of the world may know that the God of Israel is the true God. I find that particular phrase to be a challenge to me. Every time I read through, you see it many different places and in many different ways that all the world may know or that Israel may know or that someone may know that the God of Israel is the true God. We read that in the book of Ezekiel. Uh, when you read through that in your own devotions, I hope you'll do that. Uh, take a pencil or a pen, excuse me, and mark down the number of times you see that phrase so that someone may know that there's a God in Israel or that they may know that he, he's alive. And that's what we see right here. All of the, nation of the nations of the world have been watching what Sennacherib was doing. Of course, they're concerned because if they're coming in the direction of uh, from Assyria to their own kingdom, they're watching all the way, wondering what's going to happen, what's he going to do when he gets here. So they're watching the world events just as much as we're watching the world events right now. And as he marches south and he comes to Jerusalem, and God delivers Jerusalem from Sennacherib in a, in a miraculous kind of way, then all the world knew that the God of Israel was the true God. And he, they understood that. 
and they recognized that. And there were many who put their trust in the God of Israel because of that. Now, you'll read through that, and that, that phrase is found in so many different places. You find that phrase in the, in the story of David and Goliath of all places. And as I said, in the book of Ezekiel, and, and you'll find it in other places as well. And I just urge you to follow wherever it says that so that you can see what the world is going to see in the God of Israel, that he's the true God, that he is not going to be mocked, that he is not just one of many, but he is the exclusive God that is over this world, and he's going to have his way. I hope that'll give you confidence as you look at our world situation that he's going to have his way here also and that one day he's going to appear so that all the world will know that he is God. Father, I ask you to help us to keep our eyes fixed upon you in the midst of this. Lord, we recognize that there are many threats to us. We recognize that it's sometimes a personal threat and sometimes it's a national threat, but there are lots of threats. But I pray, Father, that you'd set up the board, so to speak, so that you can prove to all the world that you are the true and living God and that every knee will bow to the Lord Jesus. So help us right now to bow to him and have confidence that you're going to do your work in this, in this time. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.